Hey, I've been looking forward to this video. I, my partner in business and in life, she noticed this thing called active pieces. And it was because her and I got a email or a blue sky uh, comment about the license on N8N. And after doing some research about the license on N8N, I realized, yeah, it's very open, but it's not perfectly open. I have no problems using it. I'm using it in a way that's legit and it doesn't get in the way of anything I do for my customers. But to have an MIT license really got me interested. So I'm going to look at active pieces and compare it to N8N in a few places. I'll do a radar chart because someone else did this with another thing. I thought oh, that was cool. And we'll just go over docs, license, AI integration, some of the UI stuff, integrations, like how many services they have, and self-hosting. And then one of my favorite things with debugging and execution history. I mean, let me go down. Let me get something in front of me. Actually, you don't need to know that because I will cut this out. So let's go to, let's just look at them first. Okay. So active pieces is their site's nice looking. Their documentation is good looking. The product is really nice looking as well as you can see in the, the animations there. It has more of a friendly make style UI. I could easily hand this to a customer and not feel like I've just handed them something amazing, but something intimidating like N8N. They're both, listen, in the end, we're winning. If you're still coding in 2025, you're missing the boat. You should be coding 80% less than you did ever before. Not only because of AI, because these frameworks are so mature. If you're not, then that's the main takeaway. We have two choices or more for self-hosting, no-code solutions. Don't be coding as much. You'll get way more done. You'll be able to focus on all your ideas and not so much on the nitty-gritty of some library working with some library. Active Pieces looks nice. And then we all know NNN is definitely more of the, the star of the show. It's doing really well. GitHub 58,000 stars. Active Pieces, I don't know how many stars they have on GitHub. And that's it. That's, let's go look. They're newer, 11,000. And if we look at the trajectories, I could add that to, to some of the screenshots here so you can see that. So now let's dig into these categories. So we have docs. Again, I'm going to rate them 9 to 10. I gave them weights of what I think is important. And I think these should total those weights. I don't know where my math went. Let me go fix that. So we can also see a score overall. So with documentation, they're both good. They both will meet the people where they're at. I think N8N seems as more extensive docs. In very rarely does N8N leave me hanging for documentation. I haven't done enough action pieces. I'm digging active pieces. I'm going to be using it though, because I've already, I'll get to that in a moment. I'll show you something in a moment. But yeah, look at it. These docs are nice. They get you going. They read easily. They view easily on the eye. Probably using VPress from the looks of it. And then you have N8N, same thing. N8N has decent docs, more than decent. They're not as pretty, but they work. And I love how any then links to their docs from their particular elements, from their nodes. So I could go here and click on docs and get to it. Beautiful stuff. Like just great from usability. Do they do that here? I don't see a link. If I dug in, maybe I would find a link. That's a bummer. But none of these are make or breaks. It's a combination of things. And none of them are make or break. Again, we're, we just got two awesome solutions. So documentation, readability, ex extensiveness, N8N gets the win on that, but not by much. So I'm going to put N8N at nine and active pieces at eight. Now, the next one is the biggest one. Is And, and someone brought this up. N8N's license is good. It's not MIT. It's not open source. But, but I don't think open source is always the way. There's a certain level of things and in, 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 in there's a certain limit where a company has to stay in business or a group of people or a person has to make enough money to keep building the product. And I think we have many examples of where open source don't always work. And then we have examples of where they do. So I don't think something has to be open source to the extent of here's everything, use it, don't pay us anything. So I think there's a balance here. I don't know, to me, and again, it strikes a nice balance, but it's a little bit more risky, but I, risky is even too strong of a word. I really like how they put it down to basically don't white label our product. Don't use our product as a proxy to someone else's uh, business needs where you're just passing their credentials in and doing everything with NADN. I think if you do some ChatGPT with this and read this, 
you can see that you can build your business on this quite easily with tons of confidence. But then we get into the license for active pieces and it's just more of the clear MIT license. And of course, active pieces, its license as well uh, has some limitations. And a lot of this stuff, some of it comes down to enterprise, which is, it's a big word for something that's actually not that. It's basically, hey, you're going to use us for an enterprise, then you should pay us because enterprise means there's a certain money context there that we want some of it because it's fair. I would say overall, I really am more comfortable with the active pieces license, but I'm comfortable with both of them. So in this particular situation, the license for me came to be N8, N6, and action pieces is just a 10. It's just got it. Okay. And that's a big deal because I could easily build my mobile app with this, my ideas with this, and everything with this and not worry about it. But again, none of this is a worry as much as just to keep that in mind. I'm just so glad we have two really solid choices. All right. Now for more fun stuff. AI integration. I build a lot of things with N8N. This is a good example of two things I'll talk about, but one of them is the AI automation, where I can just stick into uh, places I need LLMs to do things, even AI agents to do complex tool-based tasks where they know what tool to use for that task. We see videos everywhere. We know N8N can do a ton of awesome crap with, N with AI. We also know that it has lane chain on the bottom of it, so they get this kind of like lift or they're building on the shoulder of giants. So it's got it. it. nailed it. I would even say it could be a 10. I have very little complaints about N8 and, and in AI integration, even to the point where I was going to do a video on agentic frameworks because it's questionable whether N8 and is an agentic framework, but I'll cover that later. And then you have active pieces where uh, it has AI as well. Now, I haven't pushed it as far with the tool concepts. But it does it. It has AI. You can do the different AI elements. So you could get into images, text, utilities, anthropic, deep seek, all that stuff. Everything we're used to. So I haven't pushed it, though, with tools, which, which would be a big deal. And I'll have to come back to that as I do more lessons in active pieces. So I think they both are offering amazing stuff, amazing pluggability. You're not coding all this. When there's a new model, you just add it to the list. When you want to switch to a different model or a different uh, API, just click and go. I mean, you just can't, if you're coding, stop, okay? Just step back from your busy schedule, step back from the deadline, step back from the have to get one more things done, put some time into this, either one of these, and you're going to be more productive. But okay, so AI, LLM integrations, boom. They both have it. I'm going to give N8N uh, a, a nine. I'm going to give active pieces in eight, but only because of my ignorance. So I'll, I'll have to come back to this. So now for the UI, this is very opinionated, but I want to look at a couple of things to show where I'm coming at for my opinion. I want to look first at forms, API building, and then version history, which I don't know why I put that one there. I might remove that one, but let's look. So I wish I could get more out of N8N for good looking forms. And if we go back to here, and I do an example form, and I go to that form, it just looks prettier. Again, very, very whatever. You can't really know for sure. It's opinions, right? But I could hand this off to somebody, and they can use it. And that, that was just throwing it at, at the AI there. Now, a form in N8N of the same simplistic nature, let's go look at that one. All right, so very simple form again. Looks okay. I don't know if there's a way to style it. But I'm also going to try something really quick. So here, very simple, looks fine. I just don't know if I would hand that to someone versus that. Okay. So you can see they both look okay, but active pieces just has a little bit more of a finished look to me. It's relative. So now as far as the UI goes to form building, they both can do it. They're both fine. I think active pieces is going to win there. API building, this is very important. Here I am with active pieces. I could go back here and look at my API where I can catch a webhook and take some data in, and then I could return a response using the return response and do something in the middle. Basic stuff. I like how Active Pieces has the live and the draft URL, and I, N8N obviously has that too, but I just feel like it's a little bit more intuitive, but whatever. And then the they have this thing with sync where if you wanted to wait, you just put forward slash sync at the end of the URL, which is interesting. And of course, they all have authentication and stuff. You're all good there. 
So either way, with that one in a course I in, which I've done lessons on before, let's go get to my CRUD one, where you can see you can easily build CRUD with N8N as well. Here I did a query, and then I just output the data accordingly. So you have control. They're both good on API. I think it's, again, who am I handing this to? Who's going to support it? What's my experience with it? it, it it's tricky because some of this is opinions, right? And then version history, and, and, and basically so I can go back in time and say, oh, I must have messed up. And they both have a sense of that where you can go back and see what happened with your edits for that particular item. Let's see if this guy has a little bit more edits. Yeah, here we go. So somehow in here I could go look and see how that was. And now let's go see how N8N does that. If we go to N8N, I just built this one. Actually, this would be a crazy history. Let's click save because that's annoying with N8N is I'm always clicking save and I don't know why. So here we have our version history. We would have a bunch of them cloned to new workflow, open version, a new tab. It's good. This is great. So again, they're both generous here, which can save you too. Because sometimes I feel like I forget to save it and then I lose it. It's very weird because sometimes with N8N you save it, but it still asks you to save it when you go to close the tab as if it thinks you didn't save it. And it's just, I don't know what it is, but whatever. Yeah, they both have version history. They both have a API building. They both have great form stuff. For active pieces, though, if you're going to transition a customer or someone who's used to make to that, it's an easy win, in my opinion. So I'm definitely giving active pieces the win on this, but I know this one's a very opinionated one, too. Integrations, and this is the big win for any of these products that we can just get so much done, right? So I could edit this flow. I could add a piece. I could add all of these integrations. Same with N8N, but the bottom line is N8N has more right now. They've been at this longer, but come look at this. This is amazing, the amount of integrations. Numbers-wise, though, N8N wins, but it's a win for both of us. So I'm going to say, for both of them, so I'm going to say 9 and 8, just because it's so impressive. Self-hosting. So I'm going to show here some of the, how easy this is. Like here, you're seeing some video on Coolify. Set up Coolify on my server, click a few buttons. I have active pieces running on my server in just a couple of clicks. Same with N8N. This stuff is just too easy. And I really appreciate, it's been years I've been into open source. But I feel like I shut them off for a while because usually everything was ugly and hard to use. And I come back a number of years later building stuff on the web and I'm realizing, wow, they've really taking a, it's just great. It's like light years ahead, all of this stuff. So I'm really glad to see, I'm really glad I came back to it. Really trying out more open source stuff. Coolify is a big uh, tool to do that. It's so easy to just try things. You can replace uh, that no DB thing. So you can have something like Airtables for free. Action pieces and talks to it. And you can easily have some nice synergy with your Coolify server in your active pieces. For example, like now instead of me getting issues from YouTube where I'm writing too much to the Google Sheet, I just write it to no code DB and boom, it doesn't complain. And I'm one step away from worrying about all these things, including cost, other than the server. So both of these are just perfect. It's just amazing. So I have no problems there. Debugging in execution history, this is really important. So basically, if you can go back and see the history and inter interact with the history, potentially see what went right or wrong in that history, that is a huge win. And then if I can then copy that to the editor and debug in there, this stuff is just amazing. Again, you can't code this. And if you did, good for you. It's rare. And if you found all the pieces to put them together in every single application again, great. I just don't think it's as, as easy as it, as, it, as it needs to be or could be like this. And again, you can go through the history here. You could go back in time. Let's see if I have something with a little bit more busyness here runs. So you can see, oh, what did it get for data? What did it respond? And then how could I then rerun it? So I could exit run by pressing that. I could copy stuff over. I could download it. And I don't know if I can copy it back into my state management. That's it. That's an interesting one to look up. Overall, they're both just great. I'm giving any in a little bit more. Again, most of that's just my ignorance. So I'm going to come back after a few projects with active pieces. But you can see active pieces overall is a great option. It doesn't win out on N8N, but 
I think anything I'm seeing here for loss is A, I don't have enough experience with active pieces, but I'm heading there and I'm seeing everything I like. And B, it hasn't had the time and it has had to build up the integrations, the documentations, uh, and everything else that's making it in win at this moment. The license is just a game changer. So again, boom, like why not? And the self-hosting so easy. So in the end, I'm just really glad we have two two great options and again if you're coding uh, if you're building apis if you're doing one-off projects for yourself or your clients that don't need the complexity that we think these things need and then don't really ask the right questions about what is scaling what is complexity what can we build now and change later if it's a success um, then I think you're missing the biggest win of all is that we have these tools to quickly prototype, quickly build, quickly, not just prototype, but build things that are just done. That's the biggest takeaway here is, wow, we got two great solutions. We have a win overall, and I'm glad about that. All right, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you take a look at Active Pieces because it's really worth your time. All right, thank you.